Okay, so now let's take a look at the steps um, inside DataMaker to actually um, build the components that you need to clone data. Now, um, if you've seen the, the little video prior to this, you'll see you can clone data from one system to another. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to clone within my own uh, development environment. So here's uh, development environment. We've got a bunch of credit card tables. And these are a pretty complex set of tables, um, lots of interrelationships between them. And what I'm really interested in is I've got a specific address that I'm interested in. So let's go and look at ADD1047. And turn that off. And what we have then is basically one row of data. But you can see that there are. Um, you know, relationships off to other tables, and then relationships off from those tables, etc. So a fairly sort of common problem that you have. And with the data maker, this could be across multiple systems. In this case, I'll just do it for a single system. So if we look at uh, individual card holders, we find there's one. Um, and let's look at the card accounts. And for the card accounts, we can drill down and we'll look at some transactions. And we can also take a look. We've got some nice events there as well. So it's a nice piece of data, but uh, basically what I'm after is I want more copies of it. Now, in terms of, first of all, these relationships will have been put in as, you know, as part of the set of the system, all standard stuff, either reverse engineered from the data or from models or imported. But you have all the foreign keys and any additional relationships within there. Um, if you look at it in um, our diagrammer tool, so if we take a look at this, all sorts of different layouts. A good one is the circular one, I find. Um, and if we take a look at that, um, so the ones we're interested in, the ones in green, these are some parent ones. Um, if we take a look at transactions, uh, that, uh, that's a child purple, and you'll see it's got some events which are related to it, which are parents, and events going up to card accounts. And you can see there's some, and then from card accounts up to um, risk accounts, individual card holders, you can work your way up to individual card holders to addresses, and you can see address is really kind of the driver here. Everything kind of hangs off that. Um, now, the first thing we'll need to do is we, we create some, um, we use GT subset to define um, the data that we are going to be cloning. So within that, we've got an address, and we've drawn a little sort of root structure here, um, and we have individual card holders, customer accounts, billing accounts, risk accounts, uh, and the complexity is kind of drawn up within that. So if you think about trying to move an address, um, you know, the card holders would have to match with the address, the risk accounts, and there's a lot of cross relationships going on here as well. So once you've defined your subset, which is uh, pretty standard stuff, have a look at um, some of the uh, some of our videos. Basically, what you do is you go back into uh, Data Maker. I'm going to create a, a new data pool to do the work, and we're going to call it uh, Clone. Oops, I'm going to call it Clone Address. So and we've got somewhere where we can start doing some work. Now I could go in and create all the various data maker functions by hand. But what we have are we have got this concept of accelerators. And accelerators pretty much do all the work for you without having to think too much. So um, create data manually, which is what I just talked about. Um, select tables and use standard um, accelerator rules. But the one I'm actually interested in is this. There's a couple of them, which is just straightforward subsetting, extract data from A and move it to B. And in this case, it's cloning data. Um, and if we just go back to our subset, get individuals of our address, and create data based on a subset select below. Now what it's going to do, um, we don't going to use the, um, sampling in this case, we're just going to use one of our accelerators, which is cloning rules, um, and it's going to say use the next available numeric high value to find the next, uh, the next value um, if, if I'm going to create a new address, you know, it was address 1, it's going to become address 100. Um, the rest of them, we're just going to extract the data from our data source. So we just click on that, and in effect, we are building all of the rules that we need to be able to extract the data, um, assign new values um, up and down the tree structures, um, and you'll see what we've basically built a whole bunch of functions. So if we go in here, select star from address where um, address ID equals a particular value. Um, and as you work down to the something like the events in here, you'll see something like this, which has got a much more complex piece of SQL. So we built that for you automatically. You don't have to think about it at all. Um, we also have, um, if you look at something like um, an address ID, uh, what we're actually doing is we're using a 
two little functions here, one which is build a cross-reference. So I'm going to find the next available address ID, um, and that's going to store the old value, which is select the address that I'm pulling in. Um, and then later on, if I'm trying to use an address ID, so say in the billing account, we're going to look up the value. So if we find a, an address ID uh, that matches with the address ID we've extracted, we're going to um, up, look it up from the cross-reference. So all of this is handled for you automatically. You don't have to think too much. Um, but that's pretty much got what we need. And now I can go off and say, well, let's publish that if I want to. I'm going to publish that. And publish is our... Um, in other words, create the data. Um, now it's picked up that there was a variable in the subset. If we go back into the subset definition, you'll see we've put in some criteria here, which is address ID equals add, add ID. Um, and if we go off, it said uh, 1047, which is the default for that particular one. Um, you'll also see in here how many events am I going to need to, to publish, and it, and it creates a repeater for you. So here it's the same piece of SQL, it's select star from events and it's working its way all the way up through those tables and telling me how many events I'm going to have to copy over. Um, one other thing I'm going to do actually is I'm just, uh, when I do a publish, I'm going to store some columns and it's, this is quite useful. So what I need to know is what's going to be the new address ID I'm going to work with once I've done my cloning. I'll store that and I'm now going to publish that. I'm going to do it immediately and what this is doing is extracting data from my source which is set to development and it's publishing it into my um, uh, into my target which is also set to development so it's actually gone on and created in this case 11111 and a hundred of them so if we go and look at the job if you go into tools you'll see view publish log and the last job was that one stored values 1181 so that's the address ID that is now a clone of the original 1047. So if we go back and have a look at that one, uh, look for address where ADD ID equals 1181, you'll see all the data is the same. If we go off and look for individual card holders, and again, we've, we've kept the name Dave Little. Uh, let's go and look at the um, card account. And for the card account, we should see some events and transactions. And you'll see that we've created the business integrity and referential integrity. The event IDs are new event IDs. They refer to, um, they refer back up then to, uh, to the card account, like so. Um, and similarly with transactions as well. The transactions then are referring to card IDs and transaction IDs and event IDs that are then matched across. So very complex transformation, all done with a few clicks. Um, once you've done that, you can then go off and kind of expose that uh, through our test Azure on demand portal. So I'll just go in. Now what we've done there is we've actually created the way that you do that is um, use our visual test flow. If we take a look at that, um, I'll just show you what that looks like. Um, and in effect, all we've had to do is just drop. Um, this is kind of a showing off all sorts of things you can do. But one of them is um, move by address. Would you like to clone a specific address? And basically what that looks like in um, test data on demand land is a little tile. So we'll go in and say subset clone and find. And this is what the user would be using. Um, the work we were doing before was would be done by the test data engineer. Um, so it's hue. Which environment am I going from? To dev to dev. Pick subset or clone. Um, rebuild the test mark summary. No. Do you want to move a subset of data? No. Do you want to find some data? No. Would you like to clone a specific address? And that's uh, what we set up earlier on. And you say yes. Uh, what address ID would you like to clone? Let's clone 1047. And let's change the name to Primit. Oops. And click Next and submit and this is now going to go off to the batch engine um, which is sitting there waiting for some work where you're ready to go and below is the summary of your make data so let's give that a go and that's going to fire off a little batch job and what will happen then is the user then will get a little email uh, back in and they'll get an email saying uh, you wanted some data cloned so let's go and have a look clone by address and it will tell them ah 1180 so that's the uh, that's the data that I need 
um, that's the data that's been cloned for me and I can now start testing and using that particular one. If you wanted to um, you know put a repeater on it so you actually wanted to say a hundred of them you just put a repeater on and that would create a hundred uh, so that's all very nice. Um, on the clone by address as well which is the one we actually did not the one I created I've done a little bit of extra work on that and what you'll see in there is I've exposed a couple more variables so I've added in last name um, and new zip code and if you look then at individual card holders um, I've done a little bit more uh, work on that so if you look at individual card holders here you'll see um, last name has been put in there like that um, and actually that would then be replaced inside um, inside the data so you can also use the normal data maker functions to mask data or to look data up um, so hopefully you'll agree it's a pretty straightforward way and a very powerful way of being able to um, take some data that you really like that's very complex and within a few clicks all you need to do is put the relationships in and define the data that you want and we can then clone it for you in a matter of minutes.